Good evening, folks, and welcome back to Wilderness so Wargaming. Tonight, we're going to talk about Dark Tide again a little bit, and I'm going to go over my five favorite weapon combos, not weapons, but weapon combos, for the Zealot Preacher, my favorite class. So, coming up first at number five is the Lawbringer Shotgun and the Chainsword. Okay, now I like this one a lot. This is the traditional setup for the Missionary in the tabletop game. The Missionary is a non-sororitas character that is part of the Battle Sisters army list. He counts as an Adeptus Ministorum headquarters choice. Uh, he's a partial preacher. He has access to half the, the prayers. He allows you to take preachers and other Ministorum uh, choices without using a slot in the elites like they normally would. So he's pretty cool. Now in newer versions he has a servo stubber and different setup but the traditional setup is the shotgun chainsword. So the chainsword is pretty good because you take a look at it here. Okay, it's a vanguard on the heavy attack. So you can just chain heavy attacks and slash and then you can switch to a light attack when you want to hit a single target. Now this is a little bit counterintuitive because it's um, it seems like the light attack should be more for dealing with lighter opponents, but it's actually not. Damage is overall pretty good. If we look at the heavy attacks, See, it um pretty effective against any type of armor and any type of hit area. It's always over 100. The special action, now you can you can rev it up like any of, their, any of the other weapons, any of the other chain weapons, yeah, to increase its damage. That'll lock it into the target for a moment while it does damage, but it does a lot. The strike down is not as great, but it is very quick. What else is great, though, is this, is this is a versatile weapon. This is this weapon is effective against enemies of any particular kind. Now, it's not super effective. It's not going to deal the kind of devastating hits that some of the bigger weapons will, and it's not as quick as some of the smaller weapons. But it is pretty good overall, and you can power it up. Now, what my particular one also has pretty solid overall bonuses. I have plus 4 melee crit, plus 8 melee damage, uh, shred on the chained hit, and then rampage on the chained hit. So if you can chain your hits together, you can keep this thing powered up. Now... On the other side, we get the shotgun. Now, the shotgun, this, or rather specifically the, the Lawbringer shotgun, which is my favorite because I have this awesome skin for it, is pretty amazing. It hits really hard. You hear the, the damage rating for the primary shot is much higher than the chainsword against any opponent. Uh, if you aim down the sights, this is, this is a little more accurate. And then you can load up a, a spread shot it as well. Now, the shotgun is slow firing and it doesn't have a huge capacity, 10 to 52. But one nice thing about this weapon is when you reload it, you can reload you reload one shot after the other. You don't reload all in one long action. So if you're under pressure and you can only get one or two or three sh three shells in, you can fire again without the full magazine, unlike a lot of other other weapons. Full bore here, now this is not particularly useful. Um, I haven't really seen a point to this because you don't want the single pellet in every shot to hit a single enemy. You want to be using the single shot there. So that one I probably need to change out. But these other ones are overall pretty good. I could probably change out the infested enemies too because they tend to be weaker. But uh, a lot of these these other abilities are pretty solid. So let's go ahead and check out this combo here in the Psychanium. Okay, so we do the shotgun here. Boom. And even if we don't, that's the carapace armor there. He's dead. Now, if we look at the spread. There, one down and a bunch of damage to the other one. So let's load the spread shot again. Boom. And then we could easily go in there. Notice it's a vertical slash. Now if we take the heavy attack, we can side attacks. Now... If we bump these guys together, now, heavy attack, look at that. Two to three in one hit. There we go. Okay. And rev it up. Takes down a weak enemy very quickly. Now we'll look at, the, look at them against heavy opponents. So carapace armored guys like this guy. Boom in the head. That's not that much, but now we got a critical. 
now. Okay, now you can see that this, this, this setup is a little tough to deal with very heavily armored opponents. So that is kind of its drawback, but look at that. Against uh, a less armored opponent with a shield, half damage from a headshot with the shotgun. And then a kill with a chainsword. If we go over to this guy here, about a quarter off with the shotgun in the head. A body shot takes it down to about a little less. But four shotgun shots will put that guy down. Some of these armored guys over here, single headshot, almost down to, to nothing. And you can see the kind of effects that these that these have. Now, the thing to get used to with this is that to crowd control, you want heavy attacks hitting multiple opponents. Okay, and you want to keep sidestepping as you're doing this. Don't stand still and do this. You want it sidestepping. Because if they're swinging back at you while you're winding up for that heavy attack, they're going to hit you. And now, combo number number four is kind of a recent one. This is the new one of the two new shotguns, and this is a spread shotgun. This one is default spread. So, see multiple hits there. Boom. We're getting effects on different targets there. That's a damage over time shot if we use the low, load the special up here. Okay, that's that's like an incendiary shot. So that's a pretty good that's a good damage over time effect. And then we can switch over to the thunder hammer. Now the thunder hammer is very effective on single targets as you can see. And we can even make it better. We can do this. Charge it up. Look at that. And even the heavily armored one is down to almost nothing. Takes a lot of shotgun shells to finish him off, but we can do this. Look at that. Finish him off. Thunder Hammer, again, is one where you hit multiple targets with a heavy attack. Note that the the single slam is, is not... In fact, even if you heavy attack with the slam on, it won't hit multiple targets. If you light attack with the, the power on, it won't hit multiple targets. The shotgun will. But the point of the thunder hammer is really not crowd control with its heavy attack. It's that enormous hit from the sledgehammer effect. So I like this because you have a ranged crowd controlling weapon with a very heavy hitting melee that has a secondary crowd control. Like the Chainsword, the Thunder Hammer is strike down on light attacks and relentless, hitting many enemies on multiple attacks. Now, you have Hammer Blow, Impact, and Power on Hit. These are, these are ones that stack up melee damage, increase to Specialists, and to Elites. And I think these are pretty good. Now, I, could, I have just started experimenting with the new version of the Thunder Hammer, the Iron Helm. This one is a little bit different because it has the a wide attack followed by a strike down and then wide wide followed by strike down for the heavy. So it's a bit different attack pattern and that takes a little getting used to. Um, I also need to upgrade some of the traits on this one, but I'm so far not displeased with this Thunder Hammer as an alternative. Original Thunder Hammer has again pretty wide variety of useful targets and deals pretty high damage when it's the weak spot and critical heavy attacks. And you can, of course, power it up. The other Thunder Hammer is a little bit weaker. Now, this is not a quite as good of a Thunder Hammer to begin with. It's slightly lower rating. 
but overall not bad and it performs generally comparably. Going over to the ranged weapon. This is the new shotgun, so I haven't had it for very long. But um, as you can see, it has very high overall damage, but it, it does a spread effect. Um, now, when you hit multiple enemies, which is what you should be doing with it, you get crit increases. You get increased power for close range kills, which is actually where it's pretty useful. And it does quite a lot extra flak damage armored enemies. Now, again, this is pretty high. These are pretty high damage ratings over here. Notice we're getting up into the 800s. The thing is that this is a spread weapon, so you're not applying that all to one enemy most of the time. Although, if you get very close to a large enemy, it shouldn't be too hard to do that. Secondary action goes even higher up into the 900s in some cases. I don't know why it doesn't give breakdowns for special actions. I wish it did. All right. Combination number three. Uh, combo number three is the chain axe. The bolt gun, and this is the I secretly wish I was a space marine combo, or maybe a chaos space marine even. Maybe there's something going on here that, that we aren't talking about too much. Now, if we look at these these weapons, the chain axe is not an especially damaging weapon. Although it's pretty highly rated. If we inspect it, um, the critical hit, flak armored enemies, extra power, ex and bleed. This is where it's nice. It, it applies bleed to opponents. It also, now this one, again, is a strike down on the light, but you can vanguard it and hit many enemies at once. If we look at the damage, you'll see that the damage is generally lower here. Um, th it's not that high, but it's still more than enough to deal with weak opponents. Now, we get over the heavy attack, it gets up a little bit higher, um, but you generally, if you're dealing with single large targets you want to be using light attacks with the rev up effect if you now the the bolt gun the bolt gun is pretty amazing the bolt gun notice is very very high damage now my particular uh, example here increased damage rate increased critical strike increased flak armor damage shattering impact so uh, damages their armor and then increases toughness on an elite kill, which can sometimes be pretty handy. If we look at its attacks, notice that we're, even on the regular fire, where you can fire on full automatic, these are pretty high. Now, this thing has a lot of kick, so it'll kick up off the target pretty quickly if you're not controlling it with the mouse. But if you're in rapid fire with this, you can easily blast a large enemy down into oblivion very, very quickly. If you go to the secondary action, when you aim down the sights, uh, you still get similar damage. In fact, it doesn't change at all but you get one shot at a time, and it's much easier to place it more precisely. Now, the special action with this one is just a bash to drive enemies back. The thing with the bolt gun, you know, is unlike the shotguns, it, uh, it takes a long reload. So let's check this out. So, strike down, see, is more than enough to deal with a flak-armored enemy. Okay. And if we swing it in a, wide, in a heavy attack, oh, look at that, two of them. Now, if we come over here to a big opponent, okay, how did we do? Not too bad, and see he's bleeding there. That's the bleed effect. And we apply more bleed to him. Now, if we go to a less armored one, how did we do again? Yeah, we took him almost down to zero in no time flat. And then the Reaper, that's pretty, he actually survived a little better. But notice that those bleed hits are really, really stacking up. And he's dead. Now, if we go the charge mode. Whoops, I screwed that up a little bit. We'll try that one more time. Now, I had to get in there because I he knocked gets knocked back when I charge. But he is, that thing hits pretty hard. Now, if we switch over to the bolter, if we go to full auto on this carapace armored ogre in here, which is one of the toughest enemies you'll face outside of the bosses, and we just go at full automatic into him, 
but he's down pretty quick. In fact, I probably held the fire button down too more too long. Let's try it again. Okay, I still have four rounds left in the magazine. Now, if we shoot him in the head, now he's looking around a lot. Boom. We're still doing pretty appreciable damage to him. Now, this other Ogren that's less armored but has the shield, yeah, he's dead a lot quicker. In fact, we killed two Ogrens, and we still have three rounds left in the magazine. Okay, now notice that there's a fairly long reload on the bolt gun. It doesn't look that long, but if something's up close to you, it is pretty long. If we fire at a group of opponents, they're almost all dead. I think there's one I didn't quite get. But watch this. Also, if we fire at one, it causes extensive um, suppression on the other ones. So that is a very, very good all-purpose weapon. The bolt gun really hits hard, and its only real big drawback is that its secondary is just a, uh, a quick melee attack, which is not all that hard-hitting. It can not, although it does knock people back away from you pretty good. So you can finish them off with your chain axe. But it's not uh, super powerful. Now, moving on, let's go up to combination number two. Now, uh, combo two is this one I find to be very, very nice. This is the Power Maw. And we will put it with, uh, with now that we have a new shotgun, I may change this one up a little bit. And sometimes I do do it with the... Uh, las gun or the auto gun, but my favorite with this one is the pistol, the quick draw stub revolver. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is the revolver, in my view, is basically just a crappy shotgun. Now, it does hit decently hard. There's some criticals, but there are a number of things. One, okay, so five shots to take down. And elite in carapace armor. Now, if we use it on Ogren, actually more effective there. For some, oh, I think I might have wounded him already. Okay. Now, there's a couple things. One, notice it only has five shots, and it kind of offends me that our revolver doesn't hold six. Yes, I know there's real world revolvers that don't, but I just like it better when it holds six. It does, however, deal with guys like that, and notice it will go through one and hit the guy behind him. Let's try that again. So I got them, both of them in one shot, and they're both dead. That is one nice thing about it. It does penetrate through multiple targets. But other than that, if we go over here and inspect it, okay, uh, its damage is not as high as the bolt gun, or really as the shotgun. It doesn't have an area effect. It doesn't um, it doesn't have an incendiary effect or a spread. Uh, all it has is a bash, similar to the bolt gun. It does fire reasonably quickly, but it only holds five rounds. Now, my particular model has very nice perks on it. Uh, plus 10% range, weak spot, plus 20% sprint efficiency, which is better than you'd think. Um, a lot of suppression, and it increases crits by quite a bit as you have empty chambers. So that's a nice benefit from having when you almost always have empty chambers. So that is nice. If we look at its attack breakdown, it's it's just not even as good as the bolt gun or really the shotgun. Now it is more precise. If you get good with it, it's reasonably precise. But the reason I like it with this is that the pistol becomes very much a backup. It is purely a secondary way of engaging the enemy. And it kind of forces me to use my power maul. Now, if we look at the power maul, the power maul, um, at first glance, looks like kind of a crappy thunder hammer. It doesn't do as much damage. Um, I, I don't have the best perk on this one. Um, although the 8% melee crit is good. Uh, impact, so this is, this is pretty good. And this is also pretty good. This will increase the crowd control, which is really the point of it. But if we look at it, um, also notice it has relentless. It has a funny attack pattern. It's um, a wide followed by a single, followed by a wide, followed by a wide. And if it's heavy, it goes. It just alternates, single, wide, single, wide. 
So this one is very crowd controlling, and although you do get a second, um, you, you do get a second attack, and if you use a heavy attack, it'll start out with strike down. So this isn't bad for your instincts when you're charging at a single large opponent, because you tend to want to hold down that attack key. Notice here, its weapons, its effects are not particularly strong. It goes up a little on the strike down, and it's even higher on the heavy attack. But where it's really at with this thing is the powered up. So what this does is this. When we power it up, let me get some opponents in here nice and close together. Get in there, boys. In you go. In you go. Okay, yeah, you too. Go on. I wish they put them a little close together in the Cycanium just for this reason. Because a lot of times in missions, they're a lot closer together. Look at that. They're all staggered all over the place. All over the place. Okay. Killed one, and then we've just finished. We're going to finish him off. Now, if we go over here to a tougher opponent, this is strike down, wide swing, strike down, wide swing. That's the heavy attack. But if we use the single, boom, let's look at that again without the power up. Let's do single. Strike down, wide, wide. So it'll go wide, strike down, wide, wide. Check out, though, this weapon against larger pods. So if we power up, boom. Okay. That's going to take a lot of hits, but notice we did get him down pretty good. And what we can do is back up then and finish him off with the pistol. Okay, so that's that's not a bad combo. The pistol is a nice backup. We go back to this again. Power up, charge. Boom. And we got him down pretty good. And we suppressed him a lot, and we finished him off with the pistol. So not bad overall, but the, the real winner with this thing is the crowd control. This is just great for dealing with large opponents. You just keep charging it and getting those wide swings. There we go. And the charge holds for a reasonable amount of time. So we can come all the way over here. And as long as we, if we charge and smack and then charge and smack, charge, and smack, we're constantly getting that wide sweep. And we are constantly knocking opponents down. So as long as you keep dodging this way, this is very effective. This is really a favorite. And that leads me to my number one combo, and this is my favorite. And that is the Eviscerator. And, of course, the Flamer. Now, unfortunately, my Flamer could use a little bit of an upgrade. Um, it's, the ammo got, just got nerfed to it. It did have 42, it's down to 33, which is very irritating. And if we inspect it, um, now notice this has a special ability bash like the other ones. That's, that's not great. That's the main thing about the flame, that's not great. If we look at, okay, plus 20 against flak, plus 20 against infested, that's good. Over, up to 3% for remaining ammo. And... Protect, ignores 50% stagger resistance on it. So these are pretty good. I could probably could stand to upgrade that one to it. That overpressure was stronger. This is not a ton of damage. And it's the same on the secondary action. But the flamer, if you re remember, it really does not matter whether you're doing the primary. You can just blast out primaries, or you can switch to the secondary. And just do that. The Flamer is not going to be great against this dude here. Notice that. You're doing very little damage to that guy. But it's not a very effective use of ammunition. The other thing about the Flamer that's, that you have to get used to is this. It is a long reload, and when you hold down the right click, to do, you have to go through this that quick charge up to get ready to fire the secondary, the stream.
You have to do that, and then you cannot fire immediately. See so if I try to fire immediately. They do actually seem to have sped that up a little bit with this change, but it, it is a quick delay. Now, what I love, though, is to do this with the Eviscerator, because this with the Flamer and Eviscerator, this is the new Preacher model's super cool, awesome weapon combo. It's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it's not a single weapon like it is on the Preacher model on the tabletop. It's two separate items, but it's the same effect. So if we look at the Eviscerator... Okay, now in my particular model here has uh, plus 20% damage against unarmored, plus 8 melee weak spot, which is great if you can get head hits. Um, Wrath, 20% cleave on hit, and then perfect hit, critical hits ignore mass bonus from armor. So these are pretty good all-around bonuses. They're great for dealing with a wide number of targets. Now, what this is really neat with, it, this is interesting, is you're going to, when you're doing your melees strike down slash slash strike down and then your heavies are slash and then strike down so you kind of kind of adjust your attack pattern based on what you want to hit notice the damage is all pretty high um, there's only a couple here that are down in the slightly lower category against carapace armored and the heavy attack they're getting up into the respectable range we have even So we get pretty good overall performance. Strike down, strike down, slash. St yeah, it'll kind of go back and forth. So it takes a lot of getting used to with this weapon. But once you do kind of get used to it, and you know that you're not getting crowd control on every hit, it's very effective. Now, once we rev it up, you will absolutely butcher even very well armored enemies like this guy. Okay, that was a slash followed by a strike down. Now let's check it out on some bigger guys here. So the strike down. Notice that. That's half from a light attack with it revved up. That's half his hit points. If we do the charge mode, where we charge at him. Rev it, charge. Okay, well he was down, he was weakened a little bit already. Let's try it again. Rev, charge. Yeah, not not as good as I was hoping for. Let's try that one more time. I think I might have mistimed it just a bit. Let's try this one more time. Rev, charge. Okay, notice we killed him in one hit that time. That was pretty great. Two hits there with we did the heavy attack ball with the light attack, so we got the strike down both times. Now that is by far, in my opinion, the my go-to combo. This is really great against any target. You the you do have some weaknesses, the slow reload and, and setup for the flamer. Um it's not great against Carapace. And the eviscerator is a little bit slow and takes a little getting used to, but it is much stronger than the chainsword or the chain axe. And once you do get used to it, it is really great in melee against any target, especially when you combo your charge with the chain effect. So, all right, that is all I have for you tonight here on Wilderness Wargaming. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, and click the notifications bell for more great content. And we will see you back again here very soon.